For years, IT consultant Adrian Nuttall has worked away from home, often spending weeks at a time in Europe. Whilst his wife Denise is left to run family life single-handedly. Okay. Yeah. Kids miss him desperately, and we usually have tears at bedtime. Are you getting upset? Is it because you're missing Daddy? So they're making a radical life change. They've bought a stunning Suffolk farmhouse and ramshackle garden centre, which they plan to convert into a family-run chili nursery and Mexican restaurant. We don't know how successful it's going to be. You know, we might find we're the only idiots that like chilies. <laughs> but with no building experience, no restaurant expertise, and big plans to do all the renovation work themselves, it's going to be a roller coaster. I'm just nervous. I can't help being nervous. Hey, I keep... Go somewhere else. I haven't been rude to you at all. You How are, have I been rude? I just want to get on and do it. And he's standing there umming and ahhing. Well, I can't bear this. Working with Denise is just a nightmare. Denise's dream is a simple one, but one that many of us share. They're desperate to get off life's treadmill, work less hours, and spend more quality time together as a family. But to achieve this, they're risking every penny they have to turn a rundown garden centre with 11 acres of land into a family business and home. Morning, Denise. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Adrian. Hi. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm very well, this thanks. This is a huge place you've got here, isn't it? It is. It's fantastic. I think you're going to have to show me around. OK, okay. Cool. come on. IT consultant Adrian and his wife Denise's new business is right on the doorstep of their stunning new country farmhouse home. They plan to grow chilies in the old garden centre's polytunnels and greenhouses and turn this dilapidated barn into a family-run Mexican restaurant and chili shop. Why have you decided to make this move in your life? Our life, since the kids have been born, it's just been um, Daddy goes away from Monday to Friday, so I'm just left to deal with the kids' everyday things. Holly's five years old now, but when she was 18 months old, Denise pointed out to me that for half her life I'd been working away all week. For half of your kids' life? You've been away. You yeah. just haven't been around as a family. And that just sunk in that I needed something about it. Denise and Adrian's plan to transform their lives by setting up and running a family business relies on a simple and sympathetic renovation of this 400-year-old barn. They want to remodel the restaurant front by replacing half the timber structure with picture windows. Inside, they plan to build an entire new L-shaped mezzanine first floor that will accommodate the extra diners they need to make the restaurant pay. Downstairs, they will install an open-plan commercial kitchen, which will look out onto the ground floor dining area, where Denise and Adrian will eventually work. So, the big question is, who's going to be doing all of this work? Well, <laughs> we've had such a trouble finding, finding builders that can work on time that we've decided to, <laughs> to do all the work ourselves. Have you done any building work on this scale before? No. No, more of your, your occasional weekend DIY, I think, is, is up till now. Mm. This isn't an occasional weekend <laughs> DIY project, Adrian. I know. There's nothing <laughs> like it. It's a beautiful old building, but look at it. I mean, the amount of work that needs to be done here to make this habitable, mm -hmm. watertight with electrics and plumbing and, yep. you know, kitchens and toilets and... Well, we have a, we have a thousand chilies growing at the moment and they're going to be ready in the summer. And, and for us, the, the, the key thing is to make sure that the barn is ready for the summer. And, and really the only way we can do that is by doing it ourselves. If Denise and Adrian had a team of builders on board, I'd be confident they'd hit their summer deadline. But doing all the work on their own really worries me. If I'm honest, I'm also surprised to hear they're investing their entire future in chilies. Chilies are actually quite interesting. I mean, it's not, they're not just heat. And someone, 
<laughs> someone you were right. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's bizarre. But someone introduced me to different flavours in chilies and mm. when I was when I was in the restaurant and, and it was just like, wow, how can I get hold of these? You cannot get them in England. So we thought, right, OK, we'll grow them ourselves and then other people can come and get them from us as well. Denise and Adrian have paid £480,000 for their home and garden centre and have put aside £60,000 for the renovation. But a large chunk of the money is borrowed. The biggest mortgage we've had <laughs> so far, and it's £300,000. £300,000 mortgage? Yeah. Denise and Adrian's summer deadline is only five months away, and I can't help wondering if they realise the enormity of what lies ahead. It's incredible what you've... You've taken on you know, the scale of the build, the scale of the business enterprise, you know, a massive life change for you as a family anyway, and trying to juggle all of that, particularly with the budget you've got, is a, is a mammoth task. Mm -hmm. well, one of the biggest reasons why we've got to do all the work is because of the timescale. I mean, we've got a window to get it in in order that we can you know, live the dream that we want to and have everything this year. And if we miss, if we miss that, that gap for the summer, then the whole, the whole lot gets put back then you have to start travelling the world again yeah. and not being home and family life's compromised again. Yeah. I admire Adrian and Denise's determination to want to totally change their family life, but with absolutely no experience of building or running a business, and to put so much faith and their future into one tiny little plant. Well, I'm not sure if this is an adventure that's just too ambitious or whether it's British eccentricity at its best. Denise and Adrian Nuttall are bravely attempting to open a chilli farm, growing 150 varieties of chilies and a restaurant serving hot and spicy Mexican food. I think it's a bit of a, a mad hobby that's got out of control. <laughs> um, but oh, it's all good fun. Sometimes you've got to take a risk in life and this is one of those times. Their dream is to run it as a family business so that Adrian can stay at home and give up his demanding IT job, where he has to spend long stretches of time away. My dad, it was very good when he was going away, because it did, um, we missed him a lot. Now he can work at home, so we can um, see him a lot. The family have got their work cut out. They want their opening day to be in August, when the chilies are at their best. But that only gives them five months to convert this 400-year-old barn into a new business. I mean, it's. It's hard, it's hard work at the moment, but I'm just sort of clinging to the hope that it's going to be all worthwhile. And the kids are great, and they're really into the plants and the seeds and seeing them all growing and everything, which is really nice, because if they hadn't have been, I don't know what I'd have done. With the kids happy, Denise and Adrian can focus on the barn renovations. Worryingly, they're planning to do all the work themselves, even though their only DIY experience is the odd bit of decorating. We can't find a builder who's available to start immediately. And therefore, we have to sit and wait until they're ready. And we haven't got time to do that. So. With the barn nothing more than a shell, they're relying on the architect's plans to guide them through. Meters would be... Adrian decides his first job is to take out the redundant walls. There we go. First one out. Only 462 to go. Come on out. I've done one. <laughs> Adrian has set himself a gruelling schedule. To supplement the £60,000 budget, he's taken on one last IT job for a Swiss company that have agreed he can be based at home. He plans to work round the clock, juggling the build, with his IT commitments. You don't want to. Denise's focus is the nursery. She has the challenge of growing 3,000 chilli plants. 
months. It has been easier for me with Adrian being at home though because I couldn't have dedicated all my time to just doing this and it you know just fine just having him around it makes life a lot easier. It's nice for me but for the kids you know they come out of school and daddy's there it's like that's just that's never happened before. In the barn, Adrian's next job is to install underground pipe work for the restaurant toilets. So we have a, a new expert tool for doing this work, which is <laughs> a metal dustpan, which actually takes out big scoops, which is ideal. Oh. I've just discovered I've got a hole in my wheelbarrow. <laughs> The stuff became full of water. <laughs> At this rate, as fast as I'm digging, it's filling in with water. So, although we expected some delays, I didn't really think the water table would be one of them. <laughs> a month into the build, and the barn still looks a wreck. All Denise and Adrian have achieved so far is to knock down some old walls, dig drains for the toilets, and start painting the greenhouses. And to make matters a hundred times worse, their architect, the only professional involved in the project, delivers bad news. Our architect came over and said that not working with contractors wasn't what they wanted to do. So as we're doing a lot of the work ourselves, then they didn't feel comfortable continuing with the project. Adrian is now responsible for all the major structural decisions, which Denise is less than happy with. I'm really nervous because I can see that the, the roof is attached to the wall. Structural engineer said it's fine. Yeah. You know better than them. I don't, but I'm just nervous. I can't help being nervous. Then go somewhere else because all you're doing is just causing problems. No, I'm not. I'm just you standing are. there. Working with Denise is a novel experience because we've done it before. For, we actually used to work at a bank together quite a few years ago, and that's how we met. Um, but it was one of the situations where she was in one department and I was in another, and I think it should always stay that way. Having already lost their architect, Denise and Adrian wisely decide to pay specialists to do the jobs they'd be mad to attempt. And in no time, scaffolding is up and work starts on the thatched roof. So how's it going then? We're getting there. We've got uh, most of the inside structure out. But you are still doing the majority of the work yourself. Although we're doing the lion's share of the work, there are some specialist things that we need people to come in and do. So you have realised that this is a difficult project, very specialist sort of building, and you can't yeah. do everything yourself. Absolutely. No. You just can't. And well, also, we don't, we don't want to make a mess of it either. Yeah. We want to, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to have, hopefully, people coming, the general public coming in here, so we can't afford to make mistakes. Well, there's still it's sort of a lot to do, isn't there? There is. <laughs> yes, yes, there is, but the, the work that's coming up is, is going to be big stuff, so it's going it's to move us on quite quickly. All what about... Work. Over here where you've got sort of windows, plastering, all those bits and pieces that need to be done. I mean, that's yeah. you haven't even got this sort of window watertight yet, have you? Just remind me when you're going to be finished by again. Middle of August. We so there's, will there's no be. problem. Yeah, no, we will be. It'll be fine. What these guys have taken on here is just incredible. They've got to do plumbing, electrics, install a whole new first floor, do all the finishes, tiling, plasterboarding, install a kitchen. It's never ending. And they've got to do all that in three months. Meeting the deadline is looking increasingly unlikely, and Denise and Adrian are feeling the pressure. Working and living together 24-7 has proven to be anything but the idyllic life they imagined. There's no difference whatsoever. I'm tired and I'm hungry and I just, I can't bear this, like, I just want to get on and do it. And he's standing there, I'm in an hour in. Having laid the underfloor heating, there's just the small matter of testing that the system works. I'll just go and get my hose, please. Could you tell where it is? The glass house has got a hose in. I don't know what hoses you're on about, but there's one in there. 
Adrian, what ones did you did set up? Did you come and help me find it, Denise, you think, rather than just being rude to me? I haven't been rude to you at all. You have are, you said it in the green. You're saying it's in the green, we haven't got them on wheels, they're not on wheels. What is that? I'm just telling you that we've got two in the greenhouse. I, I thought that's what you were but referring to. I said to. I wanted the ones on the wheel. What, should I go over this way? Shortest route, it says the crow flies. Straight lines. It does not reach! Let go of it! <sighs> well, I can't bear this. Working with Denise is just a nightmare. Well, I did nearly quit last week. I had an absolute nuff. We'd, um, we had a massive Barney. And, um, oh, if I had anywhere to go, I think I'd have gone. <laughs> But um, it's so difficult. I think the trouble is, is Adrian's so passionate about it, but getting him to sit down and actually, you know, to discuss things is so difficult. He's, um, he's just like a man on a mission. Despite the squabbling, there's one thing Denise and Adrian do agree on. Renovating the barn to an extremely high standard. Rock solid. They sourced ancient reclaimed timbers to support the restaurant's first floor. Three and a half thousand pounds on uh, That's the start. timber. <laughs> Some suction. <laughs> Morning. Hi. Oh, yeah. Look at that Hi, craftsman yeah. at work. I'm, work, I'm uh, learning the... Uh, Hi, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fine, yeah. Thanks. You're doing very well, aren't you? It's, uh, it's getting there. That's pretty good. It's, um, That's pretty good for an IT boy. <laughs> no, no, learn these new skills. Got the hound to keep the sun off my head, everything. <laughs> no, you've got beautiful pieces of reclaimed timber here, working been... hard on them. We've, we've put in the extra effort to find the oak. Yeah. I mean, it's cost a lot more money. Yeah. I was just about to say, yeah. that passion, which yeah. is fantastic, mm. it takes a lot more time. Yeah, a lot more money. Exactly. Yes. That's that's what suffered. The, the the budget has increased quite dramatically. Mm -hmm. Like how much? Um, about forty percent. What? We've gone from sort of sixty thousand pounds to close to ninety what? now with the with the budget, with all the all the materials. Um, because we're we're trying to do it with the proper material. Adrian. Being passionate for materials is one thing and good craftsmanship, but being bankrupt in skin <laughs> is another. Literally, every, every every last penny pretty much is going into yeah. getting the barn done the right way. That's, yeah, at everything the day, we've I mean, ever worked for is The barn has been there. Everything. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely yeah. everything you've everything. ever worked for yeah. is going into this business. It's going into this business yeah. and this yeah. building. Whereas exactly. before we were always holding back a bit of contingency to get the business up and running, now it's absolutely vital that we get money from the business. With the build already £30,000 over budget and monthly payments to meet on a £300,000 mortgage, the pressure is really mounting up. Just how bad has it been over the last sort of couple of months? Um, I'd say it's been a really big roller coaster. you know? It, we've had real highs and real lows. Some people would start a nursery. Some people might do a barn conversion. Some people might try and run an internet business. You know, some people might not have a big house and nice gardens. And we've just done everything. And it's like, oh my goodness, what have we done? But you've started. That's the yeah, main thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're in here. You've got the space. There's chilies growing everywhere. I mean, this, yeah. this is the dream, isn't it? All it is. It is. Really. And when, when when I walk in here, it does lift me. You know, I just sort of think, yes, this this is what we wanted to do. You know, when we came here on a damp, dreary October day and saw this all empty and dingy, and we could visualise, you know, it full of chilies. <laughs> What do you think the kids think of all of this? Putting them through it in that position? I mean... I, d I think they're having the time of their lives. I mean, everybody keeps saying, oh, they're so lucky, but I don't, they, they don't appreciate it, obviously, being children. Um, and they've got such a great place, you know, to, lots of fun places to play and everything else. They've got Daddy at home, and at the end of the day, that's all they're bothered about. We put up a couple of football goals just outside the car park um, by the barn, so literally it's five yards away from the barn. The children come home from school and they say, you know, can we have a game of football? Now, sometimes I'm too busy, but, you know, for five minutes we can run out there, we can have a kick around, and, and it's just great, you know. It's just stolen moments that, you know, that are making the difference. The whole thing just comes down to seeing the expression on the kid's face. 
you know, when, when Holly and Josh come out, you know, and they look around and see what we're doing, you know, and they just have such a beaming smile on their face. It, it, it's just instant. You know you're doing the right thing. You know, you just can't get away from it. And it is, it's, it's just... That's it. Done deal. The barn now has plumbing, heating and structure for the first floor. But the relentless hours working on the build means Adrian's neglecting his IT work and missing important deadlines. How much do you want me to do? Ugh. Denise's life is no easier. If you can cancel that order and then he'll bring along a list of what he actually needs to get some... She's juggling sourcing materials, setting up the business, running the nursery and the constant demands of family life. Have you had a nice day? Yeah? The day does change when I pick the kids up. Um, however, it means I'm probably still trying to do the job, what I was doing when I left, but they either help or hinder, <laughs> depending on their mood. With only two and a half months to their opening deadline, Denise and Adrian receive another blow. There's a major problem with the restaurant staircase. They'd hoped to buy a cheap off the peg one, but instead building control are insisting on custom made commercial stairs. The staircase that they've said that I must have is gonna take four to six weeks to be specially made and it's gonna cost 10 times the price. It's gonna be about two and a half thousand pounds. So the budget is just astronomically blown out for the, for the stairs, you know, tenfold. Um, and, and rather than by the end of this week having the stairs into the mezzanine floor, which we're currently fitting the, the floor joists to, it's going to be four to six weeks before we can possibly do that. We were hoping to be open in the middle of August um, because that's when all our food would be available. I think this is just going to be the final straw with regard to hitting our deadlines. I don't know, I'm just close to packing everything in at the moment. I just think, well, what's the point? When we first came here, I don't think we really envisaged what was going to be involved in doing that barn. To us, naively, when you when you looked at it, it was like, oh, it had four walls, it had a roof, you know. How difficult can this be? <laughs> um, how stupid we were. Denise and Adrian Nuttall have hit rock bottom. Their dream of converting a Suffolk garden centre into a chilli nursery with its own Mexican restaurant and shop is a month behind schedule and £30,000 over budget. Mental tiredness is, is, is what affects me the most. Um, phys from a physical point of view, I mean, you can, you can keep going until you physically just get out walk anymore. But it's, it's, the, it's the mental tiredness because Unless you walk around with a pen and paper in your hand all the time, there's so many things you've got to try and be thinking about. I'm totally fed up with everything at the minute. <laughs> I just feel so physically and mentally drained, and um, I just feel like we're banging our heads against a brick wall. Every time we think we're taking a step forward, we then take ten steps back because something else comes along and stops us from progressing. As far as the deadline goes, oh... God knows whether we'll achieve it or not. It won't be through the lack of trying, put it that way. That deadline to open the restaurant is just ten weeks away. And they can't afford to miss it, as the chilies will be ready for harvest. But already, the farm is attracting attention. Their first customer has turned up out of the blue. That's actually got a Thai hot um, chilli in there. Really? So they're great for eating. You can add them to any cooking. Yeah. Your chilies, you just chop one of those up in. Yeah. Denise's knowledge of chilies is impressive, but when it comes to yeah, pricing, she hasn't even thought about it. I reckon 1995, oh, something like that. Special. You sell me that one. And that one. Oh, God. Right. And about, I'll give you £50 for both. So there you go. 
Okay, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll speak to Adrian. Oh am I gonna have? Am I gonna be okay if I pull in tomorrow? Yeah. Should I clean my car out? Definitely. Yeah. You got a bargain. Yeah, he did. First sale. Well done. <laughs> Denise and Adrian still have so much to do. There's marketing the business and a restaurant menu to prepare, but the barn is not yet even watertight. There's no kitchen or toilets, and the first floor's hardly even begun, which is crucial if they're to make the restaurant pay. Desperate to move the build on, Denise has drafted in her dad, Mike, to help. Dad! Sorry. <laughs> Adrian is finding that there just aren't enough hours in the day to juggle everything. While I'm inside doing my IT work, the barn is still being worked on. It's not waiting till the evening until I can help. And that way, um, you know, we can get it closer to, to opening on time. Because at the moment, it's, uh, it's looking a bit scary as to whether we're actually going to make the opening day or not. And like the build, his IT work is also falling behind. What suffers is the quality family time they'd hoped for. Oh. Josh. Yes? Yes is the answer. So <laughs> please go away. Get out. changed. Oh, my goodness. Somebody help me. Adrian's not the only one struggling. Denise is neglecting the all-important chilli crop. All this lot all needs potting on. I should be spending my days in here. There's loads of fruit, even on the ones that haven't been potted on. I don't know it's so well. That's why we desperately need to get open for the end of August so that we can actually sell some of this stuff. Nine weeks till opening night, and I'm keen to see how Denise and Adrian are coping. How are you? How are you? You're right. I'm fine, thank you. How's everything at the minute? How's your mood with things at the minute? Here? Um, OK, OK. <laughs> um, How yeah. stressed? Um, today, I'm OK. Um, a couple of days ago, I wasn't OK. <laughs> I, I thought the other day, I thought, this, um, this whole experience has been like a roller coaster. And I thought, no, no, it's been more extreme than that. Did you just completely underestimate what you were taking on here? I don't know. I don't know if we underestimate. I think what we both said and what, what, what we accepted was that we were going to give it a go. We, you know, we, this is a dream. This is what we've always wanted to do. And we didn't know how it was going to go, but we're both prepared to give it our all. Sometimes I just walk out at night time and I'll just sit, you know, on the wall and, and just look around. And I just think, I'd never want to give this up. Absolutely love it here. Now you're a bit behind, aren't you? Just a tad. Let's go inside and have a look. All right. Let me show you what we've done so far. Door. You've got the underfloor heating pipes in. Yeah, this is, in. The, this is great. the controls. All the pipes are in. Yeah. All under the, all under the uh, ground floor. And you've got all the other first floor metanine stuff's gone in. That's a lot of that's gone in. So off the beams, we've done the main floor joists. Yeah. You're starting to put all the insulation in between the timbers, which is great. Mm. Nine weeks have got to be open. Kitchens, floors, plasterboard, finishings on the outside. I mean, you know, there's still daylight coming through. <laughs> it's like there's holes everywhere. <laughs> Another issue that we've had since you were here last time. What's the that? building control have told us that um, because it's over 18 metres for some people to escape from the building, we have to have a, a second fire escape. But why are all these surprises coming out now about building control? Why didn't all this happen before? Because we're running the project without an architect. But what it really reason. shows is that you're right in at the deep end on a process that you don't completely understand, do you? Don't understand at all, let alone completely. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no idea whatsoever. <sighs> Denise and Adrian have put so much money and effort into their new life and business venture that I can't sit back and watch them miss their deadline. Now, you set yourself this deadline of finishing the barn in nine weeks. Now, I don't think you're going to do it. And the only way that you're going to meet that nine-week deadline is to get some help, and I know it's hard to find people, but can you not just get two or three guys who might not be experienced builders, but just labourers, cheap? Yeah. People just to lift things, move things, put things in place, strip things, paint things, sand things. Stuff that doesn't need a specialist. If someone said to me, 
I've got a team of three or four fairly decent, experienced builders, We'd and they're going to turn on. and they're going no, and they're going to turn that barn around in nine weeks. I'd go, that's a tall order. Oh, would you? Yeah. Oh God. I'd say you could probably do it, but it's tough. No, basically, I need to get a plumber to plumb the toilets in. Denise and Adrian take my advice, and within days, the bill starts to move at an astonishing pace. We're here just for the week, just to get the place plasterboarded for them, ready for the plasterers. As long as they don't put the floor on, it's a bit tight, to say the least. We put a um, 100 by 100 post uh, from floor to lintel. I keep forgetting that name. <laughs> With no architect to oversee the build, Adrian's the only one that knows what's going on, but it's all in his head. Have you got any sort of drawing or any? Or any no. All right, we'll, we'll do it as we go along. No, 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 any drawings for the entire barn. <laughs> this flurry of building activity gives Denise a chance to get back to the chilies. It's, you know, it's a balancing act, cos you sort of feel, well, you need the, the barn to be able to sort of set everything up and, and get open, but equally, if we don't have any chilies, then there's really no point in being here. Opening night is looming, and with the race on to get the restaurant finished, it seems like every available builder in Suffolk is working on the barn. Well, we thought we'd take it easy for a while, get someone else to do the work. We've got the carpenter in today, who's painting the door frames and doing the oak. We've got the floor guys in today that are doing the towered floor. We've got the kitchen lino guy doing the hygienic floor for the, the kitchen. We've got the gas engineer doing the boiler in the kitchen, and we've got plaster doing the plaster room. So there's no room for us to go in there. So we thought we'd just have a lunch. With the build under control, Denise and Adrian finally get time to concentrate on the commercial side of the restaurant. With only three weeks to go, they have no business plan and no menu. But there is some good news. Here is our diary of our opening night. Everybody got two bookings. <laughs> I have taken their telephone numbers just in case. We need to call them and say, bring your umbrella, because <laughs> we've got no windows. <laughs> and uh, bring a porta potty, because the toilets aren't finished. Fortunately, there'll be someone to cook the food, Chef Edward Halls. I mean, I had a career change about three years ago, so I've only been a chef for three years. So the whole thing is a learning curve for me, because I've never really done Mexican food per se. He'd better get his head round Mexican recipes pretty quickly. It's August and as predicted, the chilies are ready for harvest. Oh they're nice ones for me, well done. So you can just try it. But you said that if you take the seed out, it'll take the taste out. No, no, no there's no taste in the seed. I'm not tasting any. Just take a little tiny bit. Yeah. <gasps> Why well, did I just put my tongue on it? Hot, hot, and No, like that. That's a seed. Denise and Adrian now have just 14 days before their first hungry diners arrive. Morning. Adrian. Morning, sir. How are you? Very good. How are you? Yeah, a little bit worse for wear. You've got two weeks? Uh, yeah. Two weeks before That's this business is going to be opening up and running? 14 days. We'll start a night shift going. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, sink or swim. And are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Well, we're working on swimming <laughs> because <laughs> we've, we've already got something like um, 24 bookings for the opening night. Have you? So we've got to got to be ready. So I don't want to ring 24 people up and say, come, come a week later. Yes. You've got your work cut out for two weeks, haven't you? Oh, I know, I know. Um, got a few other issues there as well. I'm not right. going to be here. What? I have to go out to Switzerland on Monday. Up past three on Monday, I'm leaving to go to Switzerland. Denise, You're not going to be here? No, so Denise is the new project manager for next week. Oh, 
my God. Adrian's IT company couldn't have picked a worse time to recall him to Geneva. Now, Adrian's just told me the brilliant news that he's gone back to Switzerland. It's great, isn't it? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Great timing. <laughs> couldn't have been better. <laughs> yeah, we were... That was a devastating blow on Friday. Um, I think that was like the final straw. Um, did what? put a bit of a downer on our weekend, I must say. What did you but, say um, to him when he told you? Well, there wasn't really much I could say. I mean, he didn't have any part of it, you know. He, he, that's not down to him, it's down to the, his employers. Um, we did discuss whether, you know, he basically says to them, no, he's not going to continue to work, but that would have been pretty silly, bearing in mind that's what's funding all of this. Now, what effect does all of this have on you and Adrian? Do you think? Just don't of... ask. Do not <laughs> ask. <laughs> I'm asking. No, it's it's not good. We've um we've been at each other's throats. I suppose because at the end of the day we're just both really stressed, really tired, and um, we just take it out on each other because there's no one else to take it out on. So um, yeah, it's been tough. Maybe actually him going away for a week might sort of be good. <laughs> or just because no, well, we'll have I a bit it. of a break and um, maybe we'll be pleased to see each other when he comes back. <laughs> We might be laughing about it, but this is serious. Denise is now completely on her own. She has to be project manager, labourer, chilli farmer and full-time mum. And she has to get the business open in just two weeks. I don't know how she's going to do it. 3am Monday morning and Adrian's return to work in Switzerland dawns. Leaving Denise just 12 days to get everything ready for the grand opening. Was he saying that the morning stuff, they weren't going to interfere with you? Is that what he was saying? I need to get into the kitchen tomorrow. We've got no void or nothing to run cables in. This one's a bit lumpy. Yeah. See, I have to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> when that goes up to nothing. Then you just smooth it down. That's much better. That's brilliant. Yeah. And, th and this little silvery bit that's shining through will really annoy me. So you'll cover that over, wouldn't you? Grind it off bit. Yeah, brilliant. Each night, Denise calls Adrian to update them. Martin and Charlie didn't turn up again today, but they've assured me that they're going to be here tomorrow. So the floor, hopefully they'll get on with the floor. Um, I'll nip out and go and get some door handles and stuff so they can get the doors done. Ed's got issues though, because he's getting a bit anxious because he still can't get in the kitchen. The kitchen guys have still got to finish more stuff off. The whole pile of plasterboards was ruined by the rain. The roof has not been here today. Love you too. Bye. We speak to each other every night. He must send me about 20 texts during the day as well. Have you thought of this? Are you doing this? What's happening on that? And, it's like, and I send him one word answers and he says, oh, um, a woman of many words. <laughs> it's like, I said, well, unlike you, I'm busy. It's like, <laughs> for goodness sake, leave me alone to get on with it. Despite all the bad news, the staircase is finally installed. It's late in the evening when Denise gets to the last job of the day, watering the precious chilli crop. It's a wee bit stressful. Um, but the guys who have got on site at the moment are working really, really hard. Everyone's, like, pulling together, so I feel there is a glimmer of hope. For the last five months, Denise and Adrian Nuttall have been struggling to convert a Suffolk garden centre into a chilli farm and Mexican restaurant. The last time I visited Denise and Adrian, they were at their lowest point ever. They were physically and emotionally drained, and there was still a huge amount of work to do with time running out fast. The big question is, are they ready for their opening night? <laughs> Good morning. 
Hiya. Hello there. Are you well? Yeah, very well. Good. Thanks. Nice to meet you. You both look well, actually. But the outside looks fantastic, it's, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Great. The glass is all in. It's all painted. Roof is all done. Should we go inside? Have a look? Yep. Okay. Brilliant. Looking forward to this. Come on, lead the way. This is your place now. The chili handle. There we go. Oh my god. Do it's... you like it? I'm actually speechless. It looks absolutely brilliant. I can't believe it. I can't. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> I am. I mean, you've got all the glass in, all the beams have been tidied up, you've got the floor tiles down, it's been painted. What this couple have achieved is nothing short of a miracle. With no architect or dedicated team of builders, they've turned an empty shell into a beautiful restaurant. This breeze block corridor has been transformed into a practical, efficient kitchen. It's been a baptism of fire. I think we've sort of had the, the worst time of our lives, but also the best time of our lives, you know? It's just been a real mixture um, of emotions and um, yeah, a real roller coaster. but we have finished. Never thought we would. <laughs> if we can do it. Anyone can. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Come on, then. Show can me. have a look. And the staircase is in, which is brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Does it, like, comply with building regulations? Yeah. Perfect for commercial. When they bought the barn, it had no electrics or plumbing, let alone a first floor. This is great. They've cleverly created the additional dining space they desperately need. What a brilliant space. It's good. It's, it's actually come out better than we expected. How many people can you get up here? 18 up here, and another 12 down there. That's good for business. Yeah. Mm. And what about your relationship with each other? Cos you were fighting like cat and dog, weren't you? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Come on. It's been... It was yeah, bad. No. It's been a blissful six don't months. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Working 24-7 on the build has been a roller coaster ride. But at least the family are all together at home. So you set out at the very beginning of all of this with quite a simple dream, didn't you? It was to completely transform your family life. Do you think you've done that? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is uh, I have to say, this is what it's all about, family. Um, and the most important thing to, to, to me, certainly, is being at home with the family. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's getting quite emotional on the end. No, but it it's is. just lovely to see us all just sitting here and... Uh... I think it's the first, uh, it's yeah. the first time in, the last, in the six months we've all been able to sit down in the sunshine together, you know, because we've got to the stage that we don't have to be in the barns at 2 o'clock in the morning anymore. <laughs> and how do you see the future as a family now? My aim is for us to be quite normal, you know, and <laughs> for, um, for Daddy to be here at tea time, you know, and, um, and be here at night time when the kids wake up and they're crying or they've been ill or whatever, you know. Um, for me not to be able to cope with it on my own and for him to sort of take a part of it. So it's been six, six months of, like, hardship for hopefully, touch wood, a lifetime of um, happiness, <laughs> blissful happiness. The Nuttall's new life is just beginning. Their future all depends on the success of the restaurant. In the end, the renovation cost £110,000, double their original budget. They've gambled everything on this eccentric dream. T minus one hour thing. Opening night, and the Mexican restaurant is fully booked. How are you? Are you okay? Thank you. Thank you. Table nine for two. Five domesticated pieces of chili. Each one affects different parts of the mouth. I must say the uh, chili ice cream was uh, really, really excellent. Jeez. Absolutely fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. I told you all along, didn't I? It'll be fine. And it was. There you go.
Next time, the Rowls move to the Lincolnshire countryside to downsize and live a mortgage-free life. When you look around in here, it's in a pretty sad, sorry state. He's physically and mentally shattered. It is worrying.